The art of conversation in today's age, many argue it's been lost. The ability to ask the right questions will always be in style. And here to help with his new book is Joe Partavila, podcaster and author of Good Listen. It's great to have you. Thanks, Leo. Thanks for having me. I love the topic of your, of your book and what we're talking about today because we both have made a living yeah. at doing just that. Yeah. Um, but maybe you can edify our audience and tell them a little bit more about your background. Yeah, so I'm a lifelong New York radio guy. So I worked in a morning radio show for 20 years, and w one thing I realized after I stopped doing it was like all these skills that I acquired while I was there. It's like sometimes we all lack self-awareness that we don't realize like, hey, you're living this great experience, you're learning so much, and I didn't know yeah. until I stopped doing it. Yeah. And then when I started uh, helping entrepreneurs and CEOs with their podcasts with my new uh, position here at Advantage Forest Books here in Charleston, I, w I realized, I'm like, wow, all those things that I was doing, those can be helpful for other people. Right. And it's, it's it's a thing they call soft skills, apparently. I never yeah. even knew that <laughs> phrase existed. For us, I think it's hard skills. Yeah. Like, you have to know how to ask questions. You have to know how to keep a conversation going. Absolutely. But for people doing other things in their lives, other types of careers, yeah. sometimes this falls by the wayside. Absolutely. And we take it for granted. Like, we, you and I yeah. were like, oh, okay, that seems easy. But then as I started coaching and consulting people, I'm like, no, I guess it's not as easy as I thought. Not that what we're doing is rocket science, right. but it is, there is a skill that's, that needs to be sort of like greased a little bit to get going. And then that was sort of the inspiration for the book where I was like, oh, well, I could probably help other people if sure. I share my sort of like trials and tribulations of being someone on the air in New York City. Can you give us an example of what that was like just as you were building your career in radio? Because you were on a very successful morning show there and you came across a lot of celebrities yeah. and a lot of different people. And sometimes they could be a little tricky to interview because because they shut down Absolutely. or they're playing coy yeah. or whatever. So how did you learn those tools in your career to draw information out of people? Yeah, what well, the great thing was is I started there so young. I think it was like I was barely 21 when I first started on the radio station. And so I got to see what was done well and what wasn't done well uh, early in my career. So I would make like these mental notes of like, okay, I don't want to do that. I'll, 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 do, I'll do this. This is a better way of doing something. And so then as I gained more responsibilities and started interviewing, I, I noticed a big part Part of it was to make the interviewee comfortable mm -hmm. and that's sometimes sharing something about yourself because sometimes people get caught up in interviews and using the word interview where it's like question answer question answer but I'm not a big fan of that I'm more of like creating a conversation yeah. where folks can share ideas and so when you can share as a host or even a regular person on the street your sort of feelings or your thoughts on something it allows other people to share their feelings because they feel more comfortable about that I agree with you 100% but there are some people out there who, as soon as you do try to relate, they almost take it as you're stealing their thunder. <laughs> it's like, where did you get that idea? Yeah. I'm just trying to relate to you as a person and offer you an experience that I had that may help in, in moving this conversation forward, but instead, they take it as an offense. Yeah. So how do you bridge that? Well, I will say with those people, there's no changing them. There's no changing there's them, There's no yeah. changing them, but I will say... They're for the birds, as my great-grandmother would say. <laughs> from, the, from Being from New York, I have no idea what that means, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> but the thing is, with those people, like, let them get their point across and move on. Yeah. Most people like to get that give and take, pull a little bit. Uh, in, in the book, I talk about this uh, interview I had with Jesse James, the reality star and country sure. singer. So she had come into the studio, and she was famously married to Eric Decker, the football player. And at the time, Eric was playing for the New York Jets. And if you know anything about the New York Jets, they're usually not good. And that season, they were awful. And as a Jets fan, we're used to being depressed, but that year it was really, it was really, really bad. bad. So instead of me just going, hey, so how's Eric doing with the football season? I, I basically said, hey, listen, when I watch football games on Sunday, and you probably noticed this too, Lail, after the game, all the players, after they've lost, they're like high-fiving, hugging their teammates. They look like not a care in the world after losing that game. And as fans, we're like, why are they so happy? I feel like crap, right. why are they doing that? So I said to her, I go, listen, I don't know what it's like to be a player, but I know as a fan, on Sundays after the game's over, I feel like junk, I feel terrible. I, 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 don't, I don't wanna to talk to my wife the rest of the day. I feel, I feel miserable. How's, it, how's Eric taking this really bad season? And she goes, well, listen, he comes home depressed. Like he will literally go in a room, lock himself up, and just not wanna to talk to anyone in his family for the rest of the day. Sure. 
And I think she only shared that with me because I shared what I was feeling right. as a Jets fan. So that's if, kind of a personal moment. Absolutely. And we that's shared a that. Anecdote. And, and I think most people probably wouldn't talk about yeah. like their spouse having an, a moment like they probably keep that private like, oh yeah, you know, he's a pro. But but the fact that I feel like I opened up yeah. was it allowed her to open up about what she was going through with her husband. And then that helps everybody listening because they think, you know what, when I get depressed, I do the same thing. So I guess I'm not alone in this. Absolutely. Finally, how did you take those lessons and parlay them into helping others today? Well, at first, like I said, I didn't realize I could. When I first took the job, I was like, okay, cool, I'll just help them produce a show, record, edit, all that stuff. But then I realized that just talking them through the process and letting them know that it's not just about question answer question answer it's about listening and that's why I call the book good listen is because the best interviewers in the world and you know this are the best listeners like no matter what they can hear yeah. what the other person's saying and then jump off that uh, preparing questions a whole series of questions for an interview is not always the best thing because it puts you on sort of like a, a path where you're not allowing the guest to like shine and do things and have and delve into places you weren't supposed to go and so listening is the big thing so I always stress to anyone I'm coaching consulting listen to what the person has that's to right. say because they can get off in a direction that you weren't expecting and that's the fun that's like yeah. that's getting in and being curious I talk about the book about being nosy and being curious if you're a curious soul you want to listen and that. then delve into that I love that and you know what being interested in other people makes you more interesting too absolutely I want to thank you so much Joe it's been a pleasure thanks Lydia. we're back after this